begun these AI wars have. I mean, that's what so many people are saying. Half my subfeed, it feels like. And it's not just machine learning, computer vision, natural language, algorithms, recommendation engines, or adversarial neural networks anymore. You know, the kind of stuff we've all pretty much been taking for granted going on a decade already. No, now it's generative art in very large language models. It's not just the workhorse stuff that makes our devices and apps smarter and more convenient. No, it's the stuff that surprises and delights us again. It's an avatar, it's an essay. It's not just a spark, it's the first signs of real fire, which I don't fear, I don't. I've already told you why, it's the next tool and tools have no agency, no alignment, no lawful good or chaotic evil beyond what we humans, how we humans use them. Plus we know, we know what these moments are like. Not when IBM rolls out punch cards or Commodore gives us command lines. It's when the Mac and Windows gives us the mouse click, gives us office. Not when DARPA or Lynx let us phone up some text, but when Netscape and Internet Explorer put animated GIF GIFs on our screens. Not when we get Yahoo directories, but Google search. When we get maps and by no means trios or pocket PCs, even Blackberries but when Steve Jobs puts sneaker to stage and shows us the multi-touch iPhone for the first time, when we get Android, and it's certainly not the ambient computing, the natural language parsing, the sequential inference of Siri, Alexa, Cortana, RIP, even Assistant, it's the return of the chatbot, the revenge of the prompt, the hilarious irony of the flashing cursor that greeted everyone who booted up an early Nix or DOS box just back, back again, zorking us to the text-based CLI portal, only now for the diffusion and outpainting of generative art and the what word comes next rank and rando outputs of these very large language models that have captured the minds and dreams and nightmares of not just nerds, but everyone. It's what's gotten Microsoft to invest billions and billions of dollars in OpenAI, Google to push out BARD, Facebook to, who knows, move faster and break even more things, and Apple to work on whatever it is that Apple works on in silence before they announce it. And Tom Scott to ask if we're just at the beginning of this new, suddenly very interesting, completely terrifying new era of AI, like Xerox Park or Apple's Lisa, Lynx or Spry, Palm's Trio or Pocket PC, or whether we're in the middle already, the Mac and Windows 3.1, Navigator and Internet Explorer, the original iPhone or G1, or even, even approaching the end already, at least of this current explosion of growth, OS 10 and Windows NT, Safari and Chrome, iPhone 10 and the Pixel. Is this the worst Dolly and Midjourney, Chat GPT and Bard will ever be, and we're about to hit warp speed for the next decade, or the best they're gonna be until, it's time for whatever comes next after them. Are they the 3D TV with tons of hype but no staying power, VR which is always coming but never quite arriving, or the software equivalent of the smartphone where we have no idea just how things are about to change, we just know that nothing will ever be the same again. And if it's that last one, if it is that last one, then who's gonna own it? Our next big future, like the personal computing, internet browser, and mobile internet computing wars. Who's going to not begin, but win these AI wars? Will it be the marriage of new and old with Microsoft who owned desktop, but ultimately lost browsing and mobile combined with OpenAI? Will it be Google who won majority shares of search and browser and mobile software? Facebook, who after connecting all of our parents just hasn't seemed to be able to figure out who they are or what they wanna be besides just meta. Samsung, who's always found way more success in atoms than bits, or Apple, who seldom won market share yet somehow dominated mind share and certainly profit share for desktop, browsers, and mobile decade after decade. Or will it be someone, something entirely new? And I have some guesses, which I'll share in a future video, but to get in on the ground floor of all of it, Check out Introduction to Neural Networking on Brilliant.org, today's sponsor. Brilliant makes college level courses available to you, to me, to everybody. It's just the most intuitive and engaging way to learn AI, computer science, math, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, and more in a visual hands-on way, all designed for high velocity learning. 
to help you stay focused and reach your goals fast. And Brilliant makes learning like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and helpful explanations along the way so you're just never left guessing. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons just like this with more new lessons added every month. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Renee or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this video, which explains why I don't think we have anything to fear from AI except for ourselves. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.